The glue in that first segmented ring that I made up is now dry enough that I can pass the ring through the drum sander. But before I do, I want to change back to the old sanding belts. They already have a bunch of glue on them, and I don't care what happens to them. I don't want to ruin these new ones that I just put on a month or two ago. Now I have just taken those rings in the past and just laid them on the conveyor and passed them through the sander, but I found that there's a tiny bit of snipe sometimes occurs. Now if I use a sled like this, the snipe will occur on those rails on the sides, not on the ring. Now because there's eight rings, I had to make 16 rails, one for each side. And those rails, they get sanded down a little bit each time with the rings as they pass through. So you can only use them once. Once I get to the place where I can't see any more glue anywhere, I stop sanding. No use sanding anymore, it's not going to get any smoother, it's just going to get smaller. If I compare it to the original thickness, you can see that there's just a slight difference. I'll be doing the next seven rings exactly the same way. I just have to remember to change the rails each time. And those rails, I might be able to reuse them. Put shims underneath maybe. Three days has passed now since I started gluing these rings together, and this is the last one. This is the smallest ring, the bottom ring. This is the one that will be glued onto that solid wooden base. And while I'm waiting for this glue to dry, I better get started on how I'm going to mount it onto the lathe. I want to mount everything onto this faceplate. This is my largest faceplate. It's six inches in diameter, and it's been machined extremely true. And I want to take advantage of that precision. Now the idea is that this plywood disc will be screwed to the faceplate, which is very, very true. But then, does that necessarily mean that this is going to be true? After going around this disc with a caliper, I found that it was within about five or six one hundredths of an inch of being true. That's not too good. That's pretty near a sixteenth of an inch out. So I'm going to use the sled here with the drum sander again. I'm going to pass the disc through only enough just to make it perfectly flat. I want to be taking off as little as possible for two reasons. First of all, I don't want to go down through that first thin layer of plywood. And secondly, I don't want the whole thing to become too thin. I want there to be lots of wood there for the screws to grab into. Now I know it was flashing by there pretty fast and you probably couldn't see it, but every one of those measurements, there's about 16 of them I did, and each one was 71 one hundredths of an inch. That's pretty close. So now it's within a hundredths of an inch. Now even though this faceplate was ground precision flat, when they drilled the holes it seems like they did them at random, because there's really only one way that it can be joined back together again. So I'm just indexing it here so that the holes will line up properly. In the event that I accidentally get a little bit overly aggressive when I'm turning this thing down, I don't want it to come off, so I'm going to take advantage of every hole here. Well, that's running pretty true. There shouldn't be too much wobble when those rings are mounted on there. This hole drilled in dead center is going to help me to align everything up later. You'll see. Now before I can mount that solid mahogany base onto that plywood disc, I got to sand it perfectly flat. Got to get rid of that squeeze out. Because I want to reuse those rails as many times as I can, I'm going to just use washers here to shim them up a little bit. Okay, that's going to work. Those rails are just a little bit higher than the mahogany.
And as you can see, this mahogany base is now perfectly flat. And also you can see that when it's compared to the original, it's only slightly thinner. Needless to say, I don't want to be putting it in the lathe like that, so I have to cut the corners off here, make it a little bit more round. I don't have to be too precise here, I just have to be careful I don't go inside the line. Now you can see why I wanted that hole drilled in the dead center of the disc, and I'm going to be using it again. A little over 24 hours has passed now since I glued up that last ring, and the glue is dry. But there's a lot of extra squeeze out on some of these rings, and I just want to try and cut off as much as I can before I put it through the sander. But as you can see, there's still a lot of squeeze out on those rings. Okay, all the rings now have passed through the drum sander, and it took a little over an hour, and most of that time was setting up the sled, having to change the rails. But they're sanded nice and smooth and flat on both sides now. Now here's a pleasant surprise that I want to share with you. These are the old rolls that I put back on, because they already had a bunch of squeeze out on them. I don't know if you'll notice it or not, but they're no worse off than they were before. And I had a lot of squeeze out on those rings. Now, I think the reason is, those rings were glued together with this tight bond 3. This is just ordinary carpenter's glue. Hey, that's alright. I can live with that. Well, here's that shot that I took four days ago. I really don't see any difference. What I'm doing here is I'm making up a jig that will help to center the rings one on top of the other. Now the idea is, as I turn the ring on its pivot point, it'll be very easy to see if I have to adjust it one way or the other. The glue is dry here now, but yesterday when I was gluing these two pieces together, I was having quite a problem with this top piece wanting to slide around on the base. Sort of a hydroplaning effect. The glue acted as a lubricant. So the idea of this jig is that after I get the rings centered, what I can do is I can move these up just so that it's touching and then lock it in place and do that all the way around. So I can take this out and as long as I put it back in exactly the same place, it's, it's not going to go anywhere. It should remain centered, and I don't need to worry about it sliding around. Hey, try not to laugh. Sometimes the simple solution is the best solution. Notice the glue being squeezed out there between the aspen ring and the mahogany ring? And this is the last ring. It's the one made up of all mahogany segments. Everything sat overnight there just the way you see it. All the rings are glued together now.
As you know, this disc is going to be securely screwed onto the faceplate, and then the pot is going to be glued onto this disc. However, this disc isn't in very good shape. There's a lot of voids there. So, okay, because of all these cracks, uh, and uh, my uncertainty about the integrity of this thing, I am not going to glue it onto here. And at the end of the video, I'm going to do an experiment. I'm going to glue it onto something, and I'm going to deliberately pull it off, just to see how strong it was. It could be that I could have used it, but I don't want to take a chance. I've gone to way too much work making this thing. I don't want to have it come flying off when I've got it spinning on the lathe. Okay, now that I know what I'm not going to do, I have to decide how am I going to mount this onto the lathe. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with it this way and turn this end down first. Make sort of a tenon here that I can grab onto with the uh, Mega Jaws. You'll see. And as for this jig, I am definitely going to hang on to it. It worked really good. One-way manufacturing here in Canada makes these accessories for wood lathes, and they call this setup their Mega Jumbo Jaws. I wonder why. And thanks to that jig, the rings got glued on pretty well centered. I'm going to use the tailstock here just to give it a little added support. Okay, you're going to get to see it spinning for the first time. And here we go. Okay, that's about 340 RPM. And here we go with the very first cut. Okay, it's getting there. And what I'm doing is, when the glue is completely gone, then I stop. I don't want to go too far, I'm going to go right through out the other side. Okay, naturally I can't turn this last ring down until I turn the pot around and have it mounted on its base. You know, every time I remount this pot on the lathe and want to do something a little bit different, the more impressed I am with that jig that I made up. It sure helped to keep everything centered. Now I can get at that last ring and also the inside of the pot. So, I guess this pretty well does it for part two of the segmented flower pot. I hope you watch for part three where I'll be doing the sanding and finishing it off with varathane and also ripping apart that plywood disc to see how strong it is.